Hey everybody, I'm ready to talk about the Northern Ohio Half Marathon that I went to this last weekend. And I signed up for this the week before the race. I got an email that, you know, it wasn't too late to register. And I went and looked at it and it was only $40. And I was like, I, I think I can do it. I think I can do this. It's going to happen in a week. The weather looked really great. And I went and registered in an adrenaline rush and I was locked in. So, <laughs> the weather took a turn for the warmer in the meantime. Um, that ended up being a pretty warm day. So I was a little anxious about that. Also, rain in the forecast, but it always goes back and forth. Just didn't know what to expect on race day. Before this run, my longest long run this summer has been seven miles. So I was grossly unprepared to do anything amazing. It was really just about doing something that scares me and doing something really hard and just finishing this race. Just going off my personal background, I'm having a really hard time with work and I'm having a lot of stress and some confidence issues and I just wanted to do this and complete something and I have some time off of work so I could recover from it. It was a good time to do it. So I just signed up and here's the rest of the story. This race is a little bit of unfinished business for me. They had their marathon set for $26.20 last year and or two years ago and I registered for that thinking, oh, if I don't make it, I only wasted $26. I didn't make it. I was planning my wedding at the time and it turns out you cannot marathon train and plan a wedding in your free time. Absolutely couldn't happen. That took up way more time than I anticipated, so I missed that. So this year, I decided to just do the half, and uh, the marathon was still $26.20, and the half marathon was $40. I'm not sure why. Day before the race, I got my bags all packed. I packed three bags. I posted it on Instagram. I got a little grief, but I think I packed everything I needed and felt really well prepared. To get up for the race, I set my alarm for 4.40 to get out the door by 5. This is about an hour and 40 minutes from my house. My pacing strategy for this half marathon was to try to hold on to the last pacer group, which was the three hour mark. <laughs> and the gun goes off, people get going, and they're all going way too fast. I hear that like there's this adrenaline rush and you start out too fast. I never have that problem. I always just take these really deep centering breaths at the starting line, probably because I don't like crowds and I'm just calming myself down in general. So I'm already like zen and I don't give in to like all, everyone like passing me around me that's supposed to be at my pace. But I mean, even the pacer group was doing like 10, 20 pace when they're supposed to be doing like 13 minute pace. And so I started to like slow down and I couldn't keep up with them. I was doing 11.20 and they were still just fading into the distance and then they were far gone. So I realized that I wasn't going to be keeping up with the three hour pace group. So I just switched my watch over to watching my heart rate. And I decided to do run walk intervals based off of my heart. Before the starting of the race, it downpoured for like a few minutes. So we started this race off really wet. Like I could, I brought a poncho with me but it was supposed to get the rain out of the way in the early, early morning while I was driving up there. And then it was like 10% chance of rain. So I thought it was like clearing out and I didn't bring the poncho. Then I got soaked. And there's just a lot of new challenges when you're running in wet clothes for a long time. So I was already getting kind of miserable, but I'm a pretty sweaty person. I thought like it wouldn't be that different from when I'm just like horribly sweaty and running, but Things just everywhere were rubbing very bad. I was really intimidated by this distance. And the first three miles felt fine. I was doing my, my little strategy and you know chatting with some people that you know, we were pacing against each other. And then it just clicked with me to always look forward to the next mile. Like run the mile that you're in. Mile four is going to be a third of the way. And I'm going to feel really great. And I just kept telling myself, just get through this mile. And then you're going to feel great. And some, you know, it usually did because when I get to that next mile, I would be significantly closer to the finish 
And I just kept doing that, like, oh, I gotta get to mile five. I'm gonna feel great when it's five miles. Six miles is gonna be phenomenal. Seven miles, I mean, that's over halfway. And then it's just downhill. I kept telling myself, like, after the halfway point, it's downhill. It wasn't, but I told myself that. Mile eight, I lost track of. That just didn't happen. But I got to mile nine, and my watch buzz and that shows me that what mile I'm at and how much overall time has passed which I didn't realize like that was even on there because I usually can't read the fine print on my watch because I don't run with my glasses and um, my eyes are full of sweat but I saw that it was 202 so I had four miles left and like 58 minutes and I realized I actually could make it under three hours so I went ahead and just switched over my watch to look at lap pace and distance and I just focused on that screen and just I had a time goal for each mile and that helped I mean I, it was a huge negative split so I got to mile 10 and finally after mile 10 I could see the three hour pacer group so I inched my way closer and closer and then like right at mile 11 I'm caught up with them and then I had 2.1 miles left and I passed them and then I met a really friendly girl and I think her dad and they were just like this was super easy for them like just they were cracking jokes and they were so funny and they I don't know I was running an 11 20 pace at that time and just like didn't even realize it and I think that's just so bizarre like I usually can't talk while I run let alone like breathing and all that mess and we were just like having a great time I mean I was feeding off of their jokes and we were you know going back and forth and they would tell me about they did the marathon last year and the they ran out of pizza because all the half marathoners ate it all. So that might be why the half marathon is more expensive because they eat up all the food and then marathoners are just kind of, they're on their own. Too bad. Because when I finished, I had a lot of pizza because they weren't watching. Like, they just had pizza boxes out and you could just take everything you want. So I got my money's worth. But anyways, down to the final couple miles, I mean, it was so pretty. I don't have any footage because I was really paranoid that I wouldn't finish this race and I wanted to pretend like it just never happened. But as you see now, I did finish. I really enjoyed the last half of the race and the crashing of the waves on the beach. I didn't wear headphones so that I could hear all the nature sounds while we were in the park. And, you know, there wasn't a ton of runners around me since I'm slow. So I just had a really enjoyable nature run the last half zoomed my way with my negative split and finished in 2 hours, 53 minutes, and 44 seconds. Which, last year I did a half marathon just on my own course, pacing not in a race, just like running really far with my Garmin, and that was 2.54 and I think 19 seconds. So it was a PR for me, just based off of like what I've done before. And it just, I had no idea that it was going to come down to that. And I was really excited. I feel super motivated to now train for the half marathon and see how I do when I'm prepared for it. Now that, you know, I feel confident that I can run faster than I did last year, which I, I think I was a lot more fit last year. But this year, I'm, I'm still building that base and I'm taking my time. And maybe that's working better for me. So we have the medal here. It's the little sailboat, and this little sail is cloth. This is Northern Ohio Marathon. I'm actually, I'm disappointed. <laughs> it doesn't say half marathon on it. And well, last year's medal was like a lifesaver with blinky lights. And that's really hard to pass up. So I think they just, they couldn't pass that up. And now they just like set them up, set themselves up for disappointment. The two things that did not go well with this marathon, half, well, I mean, scale it back, I did my half marathon, is I don't have a problem with Gatorade or Powerade during races, so I'm like, I'll just drink what's on the course, and I brought like an emergency gel. Well, the first water stop only had water, and I forgot to take something before the race, so I was feeling pretty depleted, so I used my like emergency stash. I know you're not supposed to mix gels and Gatorade, but by the time I got to that second water stop, it was just water, and then the third finally had Gatorade. So then by that point, I felt like the gel was like already absorbed and I didn't have to like churn into a molasses goo in my stomach and I took Gatorade for the rest of the race. So the Gatorade felt nice, but it would have been better if I took something before the race 
to kind of get my energy levels up. Second mistake was that I plugged in my watch the night before. Um, very anal retentive about having a charge watch at all times. I mean, I'm not one of those people that goes around and is like, whoops, my watch died, I was out of battery. That never happens to me. Well, I charged, I plugged in my watch into the station, but the station wasn't plugged into the wall. So, I got to the race and I had very little battery left. And I didn't even allow myself to process that because it was going to be so stressful. I'm like, you know what, it's fine, I'm at the race, it's going to be timed. I'll know what my time is even though the watch might not make it. So I got to the finish line and I was trying to save it and that's when it started blinking like low battery and it shut off. And I didn't know what to expect from it. I didn't know what my time was really, but it ended up saving and it was fine. It was completely fine. But now I know to really make sure my watch is charging and that it's ready to go in the morning. The day after the race, I went for a walk to my doctor's appointment and that like little Garmin chafing was killing me yesterday but that was really like my main grief my legs felt sore but it was fine this is now tuesday so it's the second day after the race and i just have kind of like have that itchy muscle soreness which i think means it's all repairing and healing so it's all good i'm not sure when i'm gonna get back into running i'm gonna try biking for a while and kind of ease myself back into my training plan pick up where i left off because my training plan doesn't have a deadline, so I can just keep building up my fitness with the plan. So, stay tuned for that, and I'm going to see you next time in the training videos. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.